Dropshipping has changed the lives of thousands of my students in both big and small ways. My student Tommy learned my systems and in his first 60 days of implementing them on a store, he generated over $560,000. This led him to have the ability to quit his six figure corporate job and gain the freedom of entrepreneurship that his nine to five couldn't give him. Or Asian A, who sacrificed her time and worked tirelessly between Grubhub and Uber Eats shifts just so she can invest in learning how to launch a successful dropshipping business. Just two months later, that initial investment would help her generate over $50,000 in sales and support her family and newborn baby. Now, imagine how running a successful dropshipping business could change your own life. What do you see? More financial stability? More freedom to do what you want in life? Well, let me tell you something. Both of these students have something very similar in common. They had to make time to work on their store. And trust me, I get it. It's way too easy to feel like there are never enough hours in the day, but it is still possible to get a store up and running and bring you in some extra change even on limited time. And I'm not here just to tell you that. I'm about to show you how even on limited time between running multiple e-commerce businesses, raising a son, coaching students, being a fiance, and dabbling up in some real estate, I was able to test a brand new product on a brand new dropshipping store and generate over $7,000 in less than 25 days starting from scratch. And to make sure that you're leaving this video with the right information and strategies that you need to be successful, I'm going to be releasing a cheat sheet downloadable document for you. That's going to give you my entire ad strategy that I'm going to show you in today's video step by step so you can replicate the same exact success. If not, do more, and I'll be releasing this at 2,000 likes, so make sure to smash that like button down below. And I'm even giving out a free one-on-one -on -one consulting call to one lucky winner who smashes the like button down below and comments the word case study with your biggest takeaway from this video. So if you're ready to tap into the opportunities that learning how to dropship can create for you, then it all starts right here. Your product is everything. Now, I already know that you've all heard it before, but it's true. If you do not have a proven and validated product, then you'll find yourself wasting that limited time that you're already on testing products that are not going to give you any results. So anytime that I'm starting right back at square one and I do some product research, I always end up on Mania. And anytime that I'm on Mania, there are a couple different things that I'm looking for when it comes to deciding what product I'm going to be selling out of all the different products that are on there. If you've watched my videos before, then you know that I of course look for a product that solves a problem. But there's one other major factor that I'm looking for, and that's that the product is making sales right now for someone else. I'm a big believer that there is no need to reinvent the wheel. When you're doing your product research, take a look at what is working right now and test that. So with any product that I find on Mania that I'm interested in, I'm going to look to see is there one or multiple people who are advertising this product right now. Now, if there's like 10 or 20 people who are scaling this product right now, I obviously would not hop in that market. But if there's only a couple, that's something favorable that I love to see. Then after confirming that, I'm always going to be looking in the live sales feed section to make sure that I'm seeing sales happen on that product today. And if I'm seeing something like this, sales within the last few minutes, within the last few hours, then I know that I need to test it ASAP. And honestly, having this type of data behind any product just makes it a hell of a lot easier to decide whether you're gonna test the product or if you're not. So if you wanna try Mania out for your own product research, I linked the link down in my description that's gonna give you 30% off using Mania today. Now that type of data and trend in sales is exactly what I was seeing when I was researching my product. And at this point, you might be wondering, well, AC, what is the product? It's a strapless bra. I am not kidding. This is what I mean when I say you do not have to reinvent the wheel just make it better. Strapless bras are everywhere, in every store, and very accessible. But this specific strapless bra was one that was meant to solve a problem for women. And that was that with this product, it was a full support strapless non-slip bra that solved the problem of eliminating back fat bulges and red strap marks while providing instant lift and max comfort. It was already showing that it could sell. Now it's just up to me to highlight the problems that this bra could help with and market it. But marketing it in a way that customers would want to buy it first starts with getting different creatives or advertisements made. I am not a pro at making content, so I left making the content up to Dropship Media, which is who I use to make all my ads for the products that I'm selling. Now, although I left it to them to make the actual content, I always make sure to give the editors what is called a pro and cons list. In that pro and cons list, I tell them what I like and what I do not like about the ads that are already working on the market. I also always give them some different ways that I want the product to be shown right off the bat within the first three seconds of the ad. The first three seconds is what's either going to hook the shoppers to continue to keep watching my ad or keep them scrolling on their timeline. So I always find it best to show some sort of wow factor or big problem that your product solves right from the jump. And once I got my ads back, it was time to go. I always try to tell you guys that dropshipping is really just a system. And if you continue to follow that system the right way, you're going to get the results that you're looking for. 
I say that to say, I'm not skipping any steps when I'm testing products either. I didn't just jump into running ads. I needed to know what was going to work for me first. And as you can see, I figured this out by getting multiple different creatives back. You can see I had a lot of different videos where there were multiple formats, hooks, multiple different people talking. I mean, they were all completely different. But with all these different creatives, I was trying different marketing angles. So for this example, for the first three seconds, you see I showed what the before and after looked like, and then I went into the rest of the ad. Where with this one, I was showing off different features and benefits on why people need the product. And I was just doing that throughout all these different videos. So just like I teach you guys, after getting these ads back, the first thing I did was start my creative testing campaign. Now, for those of you who do not know what that is, creative testing is where you're able to test out multiple different advertisements against each other to see which one's going to give you the cheapest traffic and the highest result. And doing this creative testing campaign is what allowed my product to start off as successful as it did. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it went. But before I do, if throughout this video, you find yourself motivated to finally start your dropshipping journey, or just continue it, but you just need more support, you can hit the link down in my description down below to apply for my one-on-one -on -one mentorship and get the dropshipping success that you deserve by getting on a free discovery call with my team today. So here's an inside look of my ads manager, and this was a creative testing campaign that I ran. As you can see, the campaign name is Creative Test Bra No Strap, and the metrics were hidden, I'm not gonna lie. You can see that the cost per added card was $6 for this campaign, and it generated four purchases. As I go inside the campaign, you can see I had six different ad sets, and each one of these ad sets had two different videos inside of it. And let me go ahead and show you how I set this up. So here we are on the setup of the campaign. As you can see, I just had my pixel installed. I had my conversion event purchase because I'm always looking for purchases no matter what creatives I'm testing. This was an ABO campaign where I set $20 budgets on each one of the ad sets, but I really only let these run to around five to $7 each unless they ended up getting a purchase. So as you can see, here's the daily budget. I started running this at midnight Night, the following night you see i targeted the top e-packet countries with it being australia canada united kingdom and united states my age range was 21 through 65 plus with my detail targeting i did not choose any interest or any demographic here i let this be broad so i could let my creatives go out there in the market and let them win by themselves without targeting anything specific so i could see which video was going to do better than the others as i scroll down you see placements was advantage placements as we head over here to the ad level you're going to see again there's two ads in each one of these ad sets and the only thing that that is different across all these different ads is just the video itself. Meaning that you can see video two, video one, video three, and video four all have the same ad copy, headline, and description. And they even have the same thumbnails. Now, the reason that I do this is because I don't wanna complicate the process and skew my data. I only wanna test out one variable at a time so I could truthfully understand which one is going to be the best performer. And of course, with each one of these ads, I had the call to action being shopped now, and I was redirecting all my traffic to the landing page of the product that I was selling not the homepage. And the last thing I did is I went ahead and set up UTMs for every single one of these so that I could be able to track my purchases more effectively. And when you're running ads, it is very important that you see all of your data. So if you do not know how to set up your own UTMs or even know the importance of it, make sure you go ahead and check out this video right here. So after doing this creative testing campaign, you can see I ended up getting four purchases right away, which is a really great sign. And each one of these ads that were turned off, you see that they're all running to right around five to seven dollars. And I just knew that they weren't going to hit because they didn't get any added cards right away. But like I said, I had three purchases on three different ad sets. One that was video one, video two, and video three. And as you can see with this data, it's pretty obvious that the video I moved forward with was video one. So the reason I chose this was not based off of my opinion, but always because my KPIs were matching with the data I was looking for. As you can see with video one, the quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking were all average or above. So this already told me right away that my ad was competing very well in the market. As I scroll over, you can see the cost per link click was 92 cents. Now, this is really good because this metric is telling me how expensive it is to get somebody to click onto my website and visit it. And I wanna see this under a dollar, so this is already doing really well. But out of all those metrics, the most important is cost per ad to cart and purchases. And as I scroll over, you can see my cost per ad to cart was $7.74 with five ad to carts. So that's definitely a really great sign. But even better than that, this ad brought in two purchases with a profitable return on my investment. So this was already, again, a great sign. So again, the point of doing the creative test is just to make sure that you're going into your cold audience campaigns using ads that are going to drive the traffic that you want. So I just wanted to emphasize all of that so that you are choosing the right ad as the winner. Now, once I understood that video one was bringing in the best data, I'm not gonna lie, I got a little excited and I went straight into testing no interest so I could reach the biggest audience that I could without any limits. I just knew that this product had the potential to do really well. So instead of jumping straight into the typical CBO cold audience campaign where I would find different interests to test, I wanted as many people to see my ad as quickly as possible. 
So on that same day, I ended up just testing out five different ad sets at a $10 budget, all going towards that winning video. And I spent $100 on that campaign and the return on investment that I had on it was crazy. But as I continued to let it run, that very next day, that $36 in sales would turn into almost $300 in sales. From there, I'm not gonna lie, I knew it was up. Getting sales the first days that you're testing is always a great sign of the potential that the product has. But six orders on the second day told me everything that I needed to know. So right after day two, that's when I started my cold interest testing campaign, where I was just testing all different types of interests and figuring out which audiences would resonate with my product the most. And this is how I ended up setting up the campaign. So again, I started the CBO or campaign budget optimization with $50 a day. And I set this up the exact same way that I do my creative testing campaign. The only thing that I did different was just adding the interest. So as you can see, I had it set up the exact same way. So I did set a $5 asset spend limit so I could force Facebook to spend the money and obviously give all of my assets a very fair chance of winning. If you do not set an asset spend limit on a CBO, it might spend all of your money on one specific asset and you do not want that to happen. So again, this campaign was $50 with five different assets assets in it with a $5 minimum spend. So that means no matter what, those five assets are going to spend $5, which is going to come out to $25 total. And since the campaign is $50, the remaining $25 is going to be spread across whatever assets are performing the best. As I scroll down, you see I have the same location, same ages, but again, just one interest inside of each one of these assets. And every single one of these interests had an audience size of 5 million or more. That's a very big rule that I always have. I set up this campaign to start running the following night at midnight, and I was pushing all these interests towards my best performing creatives that I already found in my creative testing campaign. After day three went by, I went into my ad account and cut the assets that were not working for me. And I just ultimately did this so that more of this money could be pushed towards the ads that were actually getting me the purchases I was looking for. And you can see that again, I'm not going to be perfect. There's going to be multiple things that do not work for me. I just was cutting it earlier on. So after this day, I had a couple of interests that weren't working for me. For example, Amazon, Marshalls, Macy's, none of these were working. So I just went ahead and cut them. But at the same time, as I scroll up, you see, I had some things that were really, really hidden. Seeing some of my assets giving me eight times my investment, three times my investment. I mean, things were starting to go crazy. Now, once I kept doing this over the next couple of days and cutting the assets that weren't working for me and allowing the ones that were to continue to keep working for me i hit around 300 dollars plus every single day that first week here was the following day at 236 dollars then 311 dollars 472 another 472 dollar day then it went to 300 the following day and then 214 the day after that i ended up finishing off that first week of testing with over 2300 dollars in sales with a 25 percent profit margin which means that about 575 of that turned into profit that i put right back into running ads for the upcoming weeks and i kept these campaigns going and over the next three weeks consistently hit over two thousand dollars a week and this is with minimal effort. I mean, I was literally spending less than an hour a day doing this. I was just letting these ads run in these campaigns. I was adjusting the budgets here and there and cutting the fat off the ad sets that were not producing so I could really see the potential of what this product had. And now that this has shown me that it could really be something that is worth putting my time into after generating over $7,100 in sales with almost $2,000 in profit in less than 25 days, I'm really about to go crazy when it comes to scaling this product up. So if you want me to make a series showing you how this product is going over the next couple weeks, let me know in the comment section down below. It's important to know that the point of starting an e-commerce business is not to take 40 more hours away from you during the week. It's something that should help add to your life, not take away from it. At the end of the day, no matter how cliche it sounds, it's the truth. The more consistent you are, the more success you'll see. So stop letting the lack of time keep you from bringing in some extra money on the side. If you have an hour to put into your business today and 20 minutes tomorrow, spend the full hour today and that full 20 minutes the next day growing and learning with your business. I hope that you guys like getting an inside look of what's going on with the current products that I'm testing and that's giving you the transparency that you need to get started. And like I said, if you want my full ad strategy, all the numbers and KPIs that I'm looking for while running my ads, you can smash the like button down below, get this video to 2000 likes and I'll go ahead and put it in the description down below. I'm gonna be updating you guys on the store as I start my scaling process. So don't forget to let me know if you want me to record that, pull back the curtains so you can see exactly how it goes. I have some plans for this product so I think it is time for me to get to work and if you want to join in on the work that we'll be putting into growing our stores and sharing the success make sure you join my free discord with the link down in my description i'll see you all next week this is ac with supreme ecom and i'm out they gonna want a piece when you got it like that like jigsaw